today we are going to learn another new topic the topic is preparation of khowa khowa is a milk product prepared by dehydration of whole milk so here slowly the moisture is removed by continuous boiling and finally we get a semi solid mass that is called khowa so here we will discuss what is khowa and the definition of khowa then classification of khowa composition of khowa and then details methods of preparation and the facilities required and then we will discuss about certain tips for getting how to get better quality or body and texture of khowa what is the effect of this heat processing on different components of milk and finally about packaging storage and the utilization of khowa first let us see the definition of khowa khowa or mowa refers to the partially dehydrated whole milk product prepared by continuous heating of milk in a pan over a direct fire while also constantly stirring comes scraping by using a stirrer comes scraper till it reaches a semi solid or doughy consistency as per fssai khowa is the product obtained from cow or buffalo or sheep and goat milk or a combination thereof by rapid dehydration the milk fat content should not be less than 20% of the finished product so this is the definition of khowa let us know little more about khowa preparation the for khowa production buffalo milk is preferred since it yields a product with a soft loose body and smooth granular texture and high yield a minimum fat level of 4% in cow milk and 5% in buffalo milk is necessary in order to obtain a desirable body and texture in khowa now we will see the classification of khowa basically we can find three different types pindi dhab and danedar now in case of pindi the moisture content is comparatively less so total solid is more and it will have a fat percent of 21 to 26% and it is used for making the khowa based sweets like barfi and peda which is very common and popular in most of the part of india then dhab is another variety which will have little less total solid that is 56 to 63% and moisture 20 to 23% sorry moisture 37 to 44% and fat 20 to 23% and this dhab is mostly used for gulab jamun and the third variety is danedar which will have total solid 60 to 65% moisture 35 to 40% and fat 20 to 25% and this danedar is used for making kalakand that is another khowa based sweet now we will see the composition and yield of khowa so left side table we can see the important parameters and separately for khowa from cow milk and from buffalo milk the first is moisture content in case of cow milk 25.6 and in buffalo milk 19.2 so it is less in buffalo milk because it has got more total solid or particularly solid not fat then fat percent in cow milk 25.7 and from buffalo milk it is 37.1 so fat content is very high in case of khowa made from buffalo milk protein it is almost in the range that is in case of cow milk 19.2 and from buffalo milk it is 17.8 then lactose from cow milk 25.5 and buffalo 22.1 as 3.8 and 3.6 and iron 103 and 101 ppm in the right side table we can see the yield from cow milk we can get 18 to 20% yield of khowa and from buffalo milk it is little more because of the total solid i have mentioned 20 to 23% and when it is mixed it could be around 20% yield now we will discuss about the methods of preparation 
Actually, preparation of khowa is a very simple principle. Continuously, we have to boil and evaporate the moisture, and then we will get the semi-solid mass. Now, the basic problem in this is when we continuously heat in ordinary vessels, the mass will, the solid part will stick at the surface, and afterwards it may get charred. So, it has to be continuously stirring and scraping in case of ordinary method by using some ladle. And in a steam jacketed vessel, it can be done by better way and the sticking will be less and there is combination method. So in traditional method, it is done in an open vessel or karai and continuous stirring and scrapping should be done until we get a semi-solid mass. Then the improved method is the steam jacketed pan or kettle where the heating is done through steam and the sticking will be less and the modern method is combination of both. In this case, a steam jacketed drum heater with a rotary scraper is used and it may have an outlet valve. Sometimes it may not have an outlet valve. And then there can be two sets of scrapers for the pans and sometimes a power drive for the scraper. So these are the modern machine or mechanized system for making the koa in a large scale. So here we will discuss about the flow of operation for khoa preparation in the left side and right side we can see different stages in the picture. So in general milk is taken and filtered, it, there is standardization, then it is transferred to heating vessel, whatever may be the type of vessel and then there will be intermittent heating and steering going on. After some time when there is sufficient evaporation of moisture, there will be protein denaturation and lactose degradation. At this stage, there can be some browning reaction and it gives special flavor. Further, there is at this stage heating temperature should be reduced and scrapping or stirring should be done more fast. At this stage, it will stick heavily at the surface and may cause burning or charring. After that, there may be production of some free fat and fat demulsification that is the emulsion stage of fat will break and then it will be more and more towards solid and it will start leaving the surface it will not be sticking on the surface of the karai or the vessel so that is an indication that we are going towards the final stage and that time we can make a pat formation a lump formation and slowly we should reduce the heating and stop it further and finally, the lump we get, it should be cooled and it will go for packing. So in the right side picture, we can see different stages starting from the top left side. There is the initial stage, then in the right side, second stage, then in the second line, first left side and then right side and in the bottom, first left side and final right side. So we can see A, B, C, D, E, F. This is the sixth stage and last one, F is the final stage of Hova. Here we can see the different facilities and machines for making khoa. At the top left side, we can see the open big vessel. They are called karai. So this is for large scale making khoa, but it can be done in small scale in home in a small karai. And in the right side bottom, we can see the kettle that is the steam jacketed vessel. It will have the heating through steam. So there is a double jacket. In the open uh, part, there will be milk and the bottom there will be another chamber where steam will be there. So here the heating is more controlled and sticking, charring effect will be very minimum. That is the double jacketed vessel or pan. And in the top right, we can see the modern machine for Kova, which is more mechanized. Here at the bottom alone, there will be heating arrangement and there is a scrapping, automatic scrapping operated through motor. So here it can be done very fast. The evaporation happens quick and we can make more large quantity in a commercial way. We will learn about packaging. So Coab is basically a dehydrated product and it is having the total milk content. So it is partially dehydrated, not fully dehydrated. So it will have a sticking nature. So it is packed through basically by vegetable parchment paper wrappers or with polyethylene bags or pouches or tin plate cans etc. Nowadays we can have special kind of pouches in the right side you can see that will have a multi layer so there will be aluminum foil and polyethylene and sometime we call it laminates and the left side we can see is plastic cup with lid that is the simple packaging
and in general the packing is around 500 to 1 kg but sometime for bulk or for export purpose it can be packed in tin containers with more quantity now we will talk about storage so koa has a low keeping quality at room temperature because it is rich in fat so it will easily undergo oxidation though it is a long term heat treated so there will be no microbial growth but because of the heat treatment it makes it more susceptible to oxidation so room temperature means it will have more oxidation and spoilage very quickly so the right side we can see that store uh, the, the self life at 37 degrees celsius is only 5 days at 8 degrees celsius it is 25 to 30 days and at minus 20 degrees celsius that is the free jar it can stay 75 days so preferably the koa should be kept in refrigerator and then marketing it is done by producer himself or by the middleman and mostly it will go to sweet making industry so in india the sweets that is the traditional sweets are very popular and most of these traditional sweets the base material is the koa so briefly we will discuss about overrun which we have discussed in case of ice cream and butter so this means the extra amount so if we take some kg amount of milk whatever total solid is there over and above we get that product that over part is called overrun so overrun in koa refers to the excess weight of koa over the amount of total milk solid used in its preparation so the overrun equal to k minus ts by ts into 100 so k is the weight of the koa we got and ts is the total solid present in the milk and that extra amount is expressed in percent so that is the overrun of koa here we will discuss some tips for getting better desirable body and texture in koa making. How to get desirable body and texture in koa preparation? Firstly, milk should be kept boiling till it assumes a pasty consistency. And then the temperature to be lowered to 85 degree around till the pad formation stage. So this we have discussed in the earlier when we discussed about the preparation of koa. During the entire dehydration process, milk should be steered at 90 to 100 ppm so this is in case of mechanized koa making machine where we have automatic steering or scrapping device and the speed should be 90 to 100 rpm then dehydration should be stopped when the pan contents start leaving the pan surface so a stage will come when the solid will not stick to the surface of the pan and that is an indication it shows a tendency to stick together the materials will start adhering to each other so that time actually we have to reduce the heating and the amount of milk handled per batch should vary between one fourth to one fifth of the total capacity of the pan so that much of milk only we should use so one fourth to one fifth of the capacity only we should be handled now we will discuss the physicochemical changes in milk on conversion into koa. So it is due to the heat and dehydration there are some physicochemical changes that we will see. Firstly change of state that is the physical state from liquid it becomes semi solid. Then change in intensity of color from light to more intense color generally it will be creamy, dark creamy color with tinge of brown. Then homogenization of milk fat, the fat globules are subdivided due to vigorous agitation of milk at high temperature. There will be formation of free fat that is due to rupturing of fat globule membrane by vigorous scrapping along with heat. Then heat coagulation of milk proteins. So here the serum proteins due to heat and the casein due to heat and concentration they get coagulated then super saturated solution of lactose so the concentration of lactose become very high so that is super saturated due to the total removal of the water maybe almost 80 percent then partial precipitation of milk salt so the milk salt some are in the solution form they get precipitated due to this dehydration and heating and finally the increase in ion content so ion content heavily increase in milk it is only 2 to 4 ppm whereas in koa it is 
100 ppm. It is mainly due to the dehydration and removing the water and also due to the use of ion vessels. If we use ion vessels and continuous scrapping, so that brings the ion into the solid mass. Now briefly we will discuss about the use of koa. So koa is mainly used for making traditional sweets. So koa based sweets are many. The most important is peda. From the koa it is made. I have told earlier. Then gulab jamun. So in which the koa and the maida is mixed and made a ball. And then that ball is fried in oil and finally dipped in sugar syrup. So nowadays we can find the ready mix of gulab jamun in which the koa and the maida is mixed together and made into powder form and marketed. Similarly it is used for many other milk cake or milk sweets or burfi also is prepared sometime kurchan or kalakan. Kalakan is another kind of sweet like gulab jamun it is prepared in a different form and put into milk syrup a sugar syrup for getting the sweetness. So these are many kind of traditional sweets prepared from the koa. So now we are at the end. This is a short lecture mostly for the undergraduate students. So today we have discussed about koa. What is koa? The definition, classification, composition, different variety and their use. And then we have discussed about the preparation and methods of preparation and what kind of facilities and modern machines available for making koa. We have learned what is the, about the packaging and storage and marketing about the overrun in koa and then how to make better koa with good body and texture. And we have learned what are the physicochemical changes happening in different aspect due to the heating. And finally, we have discussed briefly about the preparation of different kind of sweets from koa. So koa is basically used as a base material for different kind of traditional sweets. So this is what is today's lecture briefly about the preparation and utilization of koa for the UG students. Thank you.